Don't you just love to know a secret? Well, my guest today is going to share some secrets on how to have an encounter with God. So that sounds pretty exciting to me. Please welcome Joshua Giles. Hello. <laughs> Hi, Hello. Joshua. Joshua, let, let me ask you this to start off because some people may not know you, some people may, may know you. I know you have a huge emphasis on you personally and in your ministry to release a reforming fire into yes. the world. What does that mean to you? Well, you know, God is so particular about the hearts of people. You know, Jesus said that John the Baptist would come in the power and the spirit of Elijah to turn the hearts back to God, to prepare them for the Lord. And so when I began to see that, I was like, oh my goodness, the emphasis of God's perspective on hearts is so uh, powerful that I think we truly miss the, the aspect of everything in the Word that deals with the heart. And so when I say bringing a reforming fire, I know that God is really wanting to purify the hearts in preparation for Him so that He can move through their life with power. Oh, that sounds good. <laughs> and like ab about how many souls would you like to be able to win? Oh, millions. millions. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, plural. <laughs> I, I love that. As you grew up, and you were not living for the Lord, you had opened yourself up to a lot of things that you shouldn't have. So when you're 22 years old, trying to sleep one night, what happened? So 22 years old, you know, a lot of the times we as just people, we do things and don't realize that we open ourselves up to demonic mm -hmm. influence. Something as simple as music. You think you're enjoying, you're being entertained, and you don't realize that a lot of these people have sold their soul to the enemy yeah. and that covenants are established through them in order to bring about a demonic agenda, an emphasis of rebellion. And so you're listening to music, you're turning on the radio, you think it's fine, and you don't realize that rhythms of rebellion are being released into your system and mm. op opens you up to, to sin. It starts yes. leading you down yes. the broad path. And so when God one night at 22 years old opened my eyes in the spiritual realm, um, it, was, it was wild because the spirit realm, there's such a thin layer between the natural mm. and, the, and the supernatural. And it's like like looking at a pair of blinds and you know that there's something on the outside, but it's such a thin layer. If I open the blinds now, I can see clearly. So okay. literally God just went like this and opened the blinds. And I begin to physically see demonic figures, uh, witches, just crazy things that God told me I had allowed into my life. And I'm like, what do you mean allowed? Because I saw them line up every night. They would line up in a long line um, at my house. And so this sleep. went on for a little while. Oh several yeah, nights. for okay. sure. And I was playing college baseball at the time, and I'm like, man, this is this is terrifying. And I'm like, what is happening? I would sleep with the light on. I wouldn't <laughs> want to go to the bathroom at night. I mean, it was crazy. Every time I close my eyes, you know, I would feel something hit me or a flash or just just terrifying experiences, night terrors. And it got so crazy that I just began to say, man, I, I can't deal with this. This is real. So, God, you're real. And then I began to pray, God, kill me or deliver me. And from that moment on, things begin to change. Wow. Well, I know the very next day you said uh, that, that you played baseball. Now, you were actually on a, a college scholarship, yes. right, for baseball. Mm -hmm. And now, how important was baseball to you at this point? Baseball was my life. <laughs> I got eight, breathed, lived baseball since I was a child. I was watching it with my dad. I'm like, I'm going to play professional. There's no other option. That's it. You know, I hated school. And I, I even went to school only to take minimal courses in order to play baseball. So that's all I really <laughs> cared about was I'm getting drafted, I'm going to play, that's it. Okay, so you had had this experience this night when you said, God, I cannot take this anymore. I'm on my face, either kill me or deliver yes. me. And that made a huge difference in your life. But the very next day, you had a baseball game. Yes. Yeah, so it's amazing that a, a prayer like that in, in a moment that seems so simple, kill me or deliver me, God hears. And He can change your whole life situation mm -hmm. when you're truly crying out from your heart from a place of, I really need you. Yes. You know, I really need you, God. Can you move in this yes. for me? And so I felt peace in that moment, which was very unusual, and I slept good that night. And I had no clue that, you know, God is going to do what He did. But I went to the baseball field and 
we're playing a team I've never played before in our, in our life, and I'm in the outfield, and you know it's pregame, you know, ritual so to speak. You know, everybody's batting and then getting ready for the game, and, and a kid from the other team walked over to me, and you know, he looked at me and said, "Hey," and I said, "Hey." He said, devil tried to kill you five years ago in a car wreck. Um, you're being attacked at night by demons. God wants to deliver you. And I'm like, what in the world? You know, because I hit a, I hit a guy head on at 80 miles an hour when I was going to high school baseball, lived. You know, I walked out of the hospital that night. He had, was able to dissect it. And I've never heard of the prophetic, didn't know anything like that. And he laid hands on me on the baseball field. He was not mm -hmm. afraid. And I felt the power of God hit me. And I felt like free, like something had changed. Like this was like the awakening within me to my calling. Mm -hmm. And so I go t inside the dugout and I'm just rocking back and forth like God's called me, God's called me. And my teammates are looking at me like, what is going <laughs> on with you, you know? And I could care less about the game, mm -hmm. anything like that. I knew that God had now positioned me for what I was designed for. Wow. Wow, and you, you didn't have a grid for that kind of thing, so you knew that had to be the Lord, oh, right? Oh gosh, absolutely. And that led you, I mean, right away, you had a full scholarship to baseball, a lifelong dream, and right away, you gave it all up. Yes. What happened next? Yes, yeah, so, you know, I felt the call of God to really just pursue ministry and just like, what do I do here? And so I was able to find a path in order to uh, volunteer and, 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 and work in that d dimension. But I left everything. I left scholarship, I left baseball. You know, you know, I called my family up and said, hey, I'm, you know, I'm in another state, I'm gonna do ministry. And they're like, what do you mean? You got school, you got all <laughs> no, these things. you've got school tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. And so they, they didn't know what was going on with me, but I knew that God was really fine tuning me and really taking me behind the scenes to raise me up um, for work. Yes, yes. So I know you started working uh, with a ministry for a while, and that's where you begin to understand and be schooled and be taught even by the Lord and the Holy Spirit in the supernatural. Yes. Tell, tell me some of the types of things that you were learning and that God was was taking you into. Yes, so you know, I began to learn the, uh, the dynamics of uh, prayer and fasting and, and just praying and really pressing and not just doing things um, going around this, uh, the motions or going through the motions, but really uh, diving into each one of these categories in a pursuit of God. And mm -hmm. with that, your heart's posture is different. See, a lot of people, anybody can read the scripture, it means nothing if they're not connecting in their heart. You can pray, means nothing unless you're connecting with your heart. And right. so as we right. begin to pursue God with an intensity in those areas, then you start to see the change actually happen. And so when I began to do that, that's when I, I, I had so many visitations from angelic visitations to hearing the audible voice of God to, I mean, amazing encounters, but also supernatural and demonic encounters at high levels because I was opening myself up to the activity of the supernatural, but I hadn't navigated how to really function in it yet. Okay, let's talk about one of them right before we go to break here. We're going to take a little break in just a second, but um, tell me about one of them. I know you actually, you talked about fasting and then you went into 700 days yes. in a row of encounters with God. But tell me about one of them. What about when you encountered the eye of God? Oh, wow. So that was the most powerful experience that marked my life. Like mm -hmm. I, that right there has marked me. And there's, there come certain times in your life that you can have such a deep revelation or an encounter that it literally, it marks you. And you know, when I was uh, praying and seeking God, there was a moment where, you know, I learned in the spirit realm that sometimes you'll face something before you actually go to the revelation mm -hmm. or the thing that God is wanting to show you. And so in this scenario, I remember seeing a, a massive tunnel with a light, which is kind of, you know, funny because people say, do you see the light? And <laughs> there's a reality to that, right? Um, and I saw it and I said, I'm going to go into that. I know that it's, been, it's calling me you know, there. And so the moment I jumped into the tunnel, um, I began to go at like super high speed mm -hmm. toward that light. And I remember it, the whole tunnel was aligned with demons and I could hear their breath and their teeth and their claws were scratching me as I was going higher. And I knew in that moment that if I feared just an inkling or I focused and took my focus off that to this, I would lose the experience. Mm -hmm. 
And so that's a revelation in itself. Yes. But I began yes. to go and go until I, my focus was so intent that boom, I was there and I'm like, okay, I'm here, now what? And see in the spirit, you move at the speed of thought. You, you think it, you're done, you're there. And so I saw this massive globe. I mean, it was like the size of the earth and I'm the size of this little tiny ant. And it was full of lightning, you know, like the color lightning, it was wrapped in lightning. And it was, uh, you know, crackling. <laughs> And I'm like, what is that? And so again, you move at the speed of thought. So yes. the moment I said, what is that? I began to float toward it. And the moment I floated toward it, I'm like, let me touch this. And when I touched it, I was electrocuted like what would kill a normal human being billions of times over. I remember feeling that electricity that I've, I can't even describe. It's not humanly possible to describe it. Yeah. It, it was just yeah. crazy. And when I did that, I was like, whoa, what in the world is this? And I began to back up. Yeah. And then as I began to back up, I began to hear thunder, loud peals of thunder, which again, can't, I've never heard that in the natural. I knew this was the Father's thunder. Mm -hmm. And you know, when you're in the, uh, the woods or out in the country, you see a flash of lightning, you can see the whole sky for a split second, yes. and then yeah. it disappears. So I'm hearing all this thunder, and next thing, the lightning flashes, and I see this massive man standing there with his arms out like this and eyes of lightning, gold crown, you know, white hair, white beard, mm -hmm. a consuming presence. And I'm this little ant, <laughs> you know, the size of an ant, and I scream in terror of what I just saw. And at the same time, I'm amazed. Yes. It was like yes. twofold. Yes. And so I'm screaming in terror, falling back to my body, back the same tunnel. But I'm also like, wow, that was the most amazing <laughs> experience of my life. Yeah. And then when I came back and I'm looking at myself, and I'm laying on the ground, I said, I, I saw a film, like a little thick film of fire all over me. And I said, the glory of God's upon my life. Wow. And then boom, I woke up. Well, I'm going to stop you right there. When we come back, we're going to talk about what that encounter meant and some of the secrets to an encounter with God. We'll be right back. Do you long for a genuine God encounter in your life? Do you wonder whether or not such experiences still happen today? Do you wonder if it could happen to you? Call now and get Joshua Giles' anointed book and three-part audio CD teaching series, Secrets to an Encounter with God, plus his powerful bonus audio CD, Supernatural Wisdom, Favor, and Divine Appointments. It's exclusive for our It's Supernatural audience. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number nine. Nine seven five two through Joshua Giles anointed book and three part audio CD teaching series secrets to an encounter with God. Joshua shares his amazing story that begins with a passion to become a major league baseball player to his remarkable pursuit after God. In both the book and the audio CD teaching series, you will begin to access new levels of dimensions in the spirit realm that can be a part of your everyday walk with God. Understand how to win the battle of the mind, crucify the flesh, and develop certain spiritual disciplines that will unlock doors to another realm. Be given supernatural keys to unlock the supernatural presence of God and His perfect plan for your life. God wants us to have that mountaintop access that He may use us here on earth with His power. On the audio CDs, Joshua includes powerful anointed prayers to soften hardened hearts. Receive forgiveness for past sins, even in your bloodline, so you can have a pure heart. To remove every obstacle that has been placed on your path so you can obtain every promise of God. For you to access intimacy and supernatural encounters with God every day. Plus, through his powerful bonus audio CD, Supernatural Wisdom, Favor, and Divine Appointments, you will learn how to tap into supernatural downloads from heaven for your business, entrepreneurship, and even for inventions. Don't miss out on getting Joshua Giles' anointed book and three part audio CD teaching series, Secrets to an Encounter with God, plus his powerful bonus audio CD, Supernatural Wisdom, Favor, and Divine appointments. It's exclusive for our It's Supernatural audience. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9752. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural. P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina 28278. Please specify offer number 9752 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today.
Welcome back to Something More, everyone. I'm here with Joshua Giles. Joshua, wow, thank you for being with us. I want to know, when you talk about being called to the mountain, ascending the mountain of God, what does that mean? That means pressing in. So I, you know, we got to press into God's presence. We can't just sit back and wonder, you know, well, I'll wait for God to touch me. God is desiring us to press in, just like the woman with the issue of blood, which we all know the story. Oh, yes. But we must have that same pursuit, whether it be worship, prayer, fasting, reading the Word, whatever it may be, mm. in those moments, if we push our heart toward God, you'll start to get past the limitations of the flesh, and it makes it easier to start walking a life of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's one of those secrets, those mm -hmm. keys that you teach uh, about pressing in. That, that's one way that we have an encounter with God. Yes. She wouldn't have had an encounter with Jesus that day had she not been pressing in. I really had never heard anybody tell it that way, Joshua, when, when you were teaching that. God, God is waiting on us, isn't He? Yes, absolutely. Climb that mountain, press in. Well, what's another one? The Bible says only the pure of heart can see God. And so when I began to really break down everything in the scriptures that dealt with the heart, I began to see two worlds. All right. And this is, I think this right here, and this is for you guys watching, this will be the most powerful thing that you could ever apply to your life because God is about the heart. And I begin to see two worlds. One is the aspect of what God does not like in people's hearts, and the other is what He likes. The Scripture says, who can know the heart? The, mm -hmm. the heart is deceitful above all things. Mm -hmm. Who can know it? Mm -hmm. And so I look at that Scripture and I say, if the Bible says, who can know it? then what can we do but look at the Word and right. see what has He declared that He does not like about the heart? Right. What has He declared that He wants about the heart? Because God does not look upon physical statue, but upon a man's heart, and He rewards them according to their motives. And so you have to have pure motives. You have to have a right heart before God. So I begin to say, I need a pure heart to see Him, not just when I get to heaven, but no, I want to see Him now. I want to be able to envision Him. I want encounters with Him. So I begin to truly pursue God, purify my heart. Remove from me a stony heart. Remove from me a hardened heart. It talks about the Israelites having a hardened yes. heart and a stiff neck. These are examples of what God dislikes. And so if I recognize that in the Word, then I start to renounce the bad things mm -hmm. and I start to claim the things that He wants. And in that process, He begins to mold your heart and then it opens you up to communion with Him at a deeper level. It opens you up to angelic activity, uh, strategies, things that are just waiting there in the supernatural that God says, you now have access. The veil's been torn from the top down, but are you willing to pay the price and understand the principles it takes to get that granted. Yes, yes. So some of those secrets that, you, that you're teaching, um, pressing in, uh, examining your heart, yes. uh, even obedience. Obedience. E obedience is, is a huge one, oh, isn't it? Huge. Yeah. <laughs> obedience is better than sacrifice. And, you know, we've heard that again, that scripture. Well, what does this mean? This means that you must, in order to walk a life of the Spirit, right, and see God move in your life in an accelerated rate, we have to first learn step one, which is obedience. Now, once we learn obedience, God wants faster obedience, and that's <laughs> step two. Because we look at it and we're like, man, I knew God told me to do this. I knew I was supposed to say this. I knew I was supposed to do this action. And you know that God has spoken to you, but after the fact, you start beating yourself up because you're like, I knew this was God. Well, once you recognize that, the next time a situation or scenario right. happens, obey quicker. Right. The moment you obey quicker, faith is built within you, confidence is built within you, and now the next thing that happens, do it quicker. And so now my goal is not just to obey, it's to do it quicker, because now I can see an accelerated work in my life, and, and the confidence is always there to walk out. Whatever God says, you just do. Why does God call us to the mountain, and then, and then what, what do we get once we're on the mountain. Yes. So God calls us to the mountain because He is there. I mean, He's a, it's a place of holiness, a place of purity. It's, it's, a, it's a high place in Him, and it's an ascension. Anytime you climb a mountain in the natural, there's work. 
and yeah. you see the same yeah. thing is a is a uh, example of the natural and the spiritual. There's going to be work. If you just want to stay at base camp and be a you know a, a watered down believer, then you can stay there and you'll live a watered down lifestyle. That, but if God's calling you to the mountain, which He's calling us all to yes. have a deeper yes. relationship in Him, yes. then there's work. There's oxygen tanks that that the people carry. There's they set up time, they rest, they do what they got to do, and they keep on going higher. And that's what God wants us to do is to keep on ascending the mountain because His presence is there. We're trying to access His presence. What does, what does that mean to you, His presence? What does that mean to you? His weight, mm. his, his tangible breakthroughs, His tangible environment, His atmosphere, to, to know that a secular person can be in your midst and says, God is on that person. Mm -hmm. I don't know who they are. They don't just talk it, but there's something of substance there. You walk into a place, you know, you spray some perfume on. When you walk out, you still have a trail of the mm -hmm. perfume or mm -hmm. the cologne mm -hmm. and His presence, you carry a trail, it lingers, it's around you. And so if you truly have been in His presence, it is undeniable even by the most hardened heart. And that's how you access people because a lot of people have heard the Word. A lot of yeah. people have heard scriptures. Yeah. Yeah. They've heard prayers. They've, they've seen the, the, uh, the dynamics of the gospel. Sure. But they need demonstration. They need someone yes. who's been in the presence yes. of God because in the presence of God, there's joy, there's peace, there's love, there's transformation, there's freedom. And when people can experience that freedom, yes. they, they want more. That makes the difference. Yes, that makes the difference. the difference. I want to go back to one thing that you said when, when you were talking about those secrets, those keys. When you were talking about the heart, you had a vision one time of standing before gates that were locked. Yes. Yes, yeah, so I was standing before the gates of heaven, and it was phenomenal because, you know, a lot of times when you have a revelation, you just know, and so you, you act upon it. And when you act upon it in a spiritual encounter, when you come back, you're like, oh, that's what that meant. How in the world did I know to do that? You know, it's just a revelation, yeah. it's a download. Yeah. And I knew that my heart was the access to opening the gates, to, to ha seeing the gates open. Yeah. And so it was very wild that I was able to put my hand in my chest and I took my heart out and I put it and I turned it. And when I turned it, the gates began to open and then boom, I was back in my body again. And I said, wow. I said, it's all about the heart, mm -hmm. all about the heart. Mm -hmm. I know you are a powerhouse, a warrior when it comes to spiritual warfare because of some of these encounters that you have had. But, but, but the other side of that you exhibit so well in listening to God when it comes to love. Tell us about the Satanists that you encountered. Oh, yes. Yeah. And so again, back to obedience, this is powerful because it's not always what you think, of course, it's obeying the Holy Spirit, right? Mm -hmm. And so I remember going downtown West Palm Beach and, and taking a bunch of youth to go down there and we demonstrate God. We don't just talk about it, we let's go demonstrate it. Let God highlight somebody, pray for them. Is there an illness? Are you believing mm -hmm. for a deliverance? Whatever it may be. And so when you're led by the Spirit, then every step you take is orchestrated by God. You see Him move. And so I remember seeing this Satanist. He had uh, pentagrams and demonic tattoos, all this stuff all over him. And God was like, go over there to him, demonstrate love, not power. Oh. And I was like, oh. what? I'm like, okay. And so I began to sit down beside him. And as I sit down beside him, he turned and looked at me and says, I've got more power than you. Oh. Which was the oh. first thing God said, don't even engage. And so it's the enemy already tempting, like Jesus was tempted. And I said, no, I said, the Lord loves you. You know, and he mm -hmm. says, no, he says, I got more power in you. And as I began to speak on the love of Jesus to him, the demons began to manifest. He began to growl and turn his head. And, and, he, and he says, I control all of these legions of demons. I mean, it was wild what he was saying. And I said, no, the Lord loves you. And I just stayed on that point. Yes. And it just got him so mad that he just reared back and wanted to swing. Yes. And as he began to swing, he just froze. And when he froze, I had a flash of an angel holding him. And I was like, whoa, this is unusual. Because when he began to do that, I felt just peace. Like I was just mm -hmm. like, and I wouldn't have felt that before. I just, no way, because I'm a fighter myself. I want to, yes. you know. Uh, <laughs> uh, and so I just felt peace. And I looked and I said, I said, an angel is holding you. And he says, I, what do I do? And a tear rolled down his face. And I said, just give your life to the Lord. And mm. so I led him through the salvation prayer, prayed for him, made him renounce the demonic covenants and the things that he had been established to in Wicca and all that right. stuff. And, and the power of God hit him and he walked away a completely different person. 
Wow, wow. Let me, let me ask you one question about the encounter that you had where you, you touched the eye of God. Why do you think you had that encounter? I had that encounter because God wanted me to see the hearts of people. I mm -hmm. wanted to see how He sees. And, and that used to be my prayer, so I know that through that persistency of prayers, like God, I must see as you see, because mm -hmm. I found in the scripture, it says, God does not look upon the stature of man, but on the heart and the, the heart. motives, right? Just like when David was being chosen as king, you know, the, the prophet said, oh, it must be, this is the Lord's anointed. He said, right. no, I don't right. look at that, I look at the heart. And so when I saw that, I said, God, I must see as you see, because anybody can put on a facade, we can look nice, we can dress nice, but they may be working for the enemy. Yeah. I have to see behind the scenes, not only for discernment, discerning who people are around me, but in order to discern what they need in their life that yes. I could unlock or speak yes. to, yes. and the next thing an explosion happens within them that brings them through their purpose. Mm -hmm. And so when I touch God's eye, I, I begin to see in a whole nother world, and I begin to see into people's uh, thoughts, insights. Even the Bible says in Jesus perceived mm -hmm. their thoughts. Mm -hmm. He knew their thoughts. Mm -hmm. And I've had mm -hmm. many of situations where I could read people's thoughts and I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, this is wild that yes. God has given yes. me insight, you know? Well, we've got just a couple minutes left. I'd like for you to take this time, a minute, half, two minutes, something like that, and just, and, and, and look to the people that are watching and share your heart with them and invite them um, however you would like to pray for them. For sure. Yeah. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you begin to move upon each and every person that is hearing the sound of my voice and that the power of God would flow through their life unrestricted in the name of Jesus. The Bible says that out of the belly flows rivers of living water. So I, I prophesy right now that any resistance in the realm of the spirit that is, that is within their belly that is holding back the explosion of the Holy Spirit would be begin to move in their life right now in the name of Jesus, that God, you would begin to condition their heart for you. Yes. You'd begin to mold them yes. and shape them because you are the potter, they are the clay. And Father, I pray that right now that they will be able to understand that the submission and the level of obedience that must take place for their heart to remain in the potter's wheel, yes. that you continue to yes. mold them for purpose in the name of Jesus, and that anything thing of the enemy that has been released against them, any assignment of Satan that is prepared against them or their household is destroyed by the fire of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. And Father, I pray that they will begin to be touched by you and their heart will begin to change, their very mind and reality will begin to change and be connected and engrafted yes. to your will yes. in the name of Jesus. Yes, yes. Joshua, thank you for thank being you so much. with us. And thank you all for watching Something More once again. And if you want to learn to have an encounter with God, be sure and look up Joshua Giles, Firebrand Global, Firebrand right? Global, that's right. <laughs> we'll see you next time.